cool things more cool things what a mess while well, I'm doing my rigging rigging things and uh, I was able to get the lee board on it's all painted now it's got the pivot bolt in and uh, got a cam cleat here for the pull-up line I'll have a got a hole drilled through here I seal that with the uh, super glue like I've been doing there'll be a line going through there to this cam cleat to lift the lee board up and this is uh, a pop-off cleat you can adjust it so that it flips forward if too much pressure is put on it and that'll be the one that pulls the top of the lee board back to hold it down that way if it ever hits anything that'll pop up and uh, got a few more things on I got the uh, eye bolts for the sheet traveler there'll be a line going from one bolt to the other and the sheet will fasten to it my boomkin mounts on got my mast step on the rudder is on permanently and now I have a pop-off cleat here that's going to hold the rudder down I'll be drilling a hole 8 inch stainless steel cleat be through bolted and my bow chocks this is the top of the main mast I'm going to have uh, two pulleys up here a quarter inch one on the front side the, the two lines that will end up making the lazy jacks and our topping lift will be and then one on the back side with a pulley that will hold my halyard to haul the sail up so the problem is I have these here's the thing here I want to put through there I got these two pad eyes with a pulley on each end I want them to bolt through bolt with number 10 bolts with nuts on the end so the problem is to get it to come out where I want it so what I've made is a little jig first thing to do is spot the holes I measured down an inch from the top to the top hole spot the holes there on this side then I spot the holes on the other side so they're where I want them to come out but if I just start drilling through there it's going to wander and it's not going to come out right so what I made is a little jig here I took a piece of wood and drilled a hole through it all the way through it with a drill the size of a number 10 it's a 195 I believe it is and I drill that through there before I cut it out then I cut out a section that will fit over the mast and the way that I use it start to drill in to the hole I spotted there it is then take a number 10 screw machine screw the size that I'm going to use put it in this hole till it goes into the spot hole and I just go in a little bit because I've already drilled it then I run my drill through halfway then take it out and do, put it on the other side put them in from the other side the bolt in, run my drill, put it in the start hole, go through and they meet halfway and they came out perfect. It's another little secret of how I do that. It's April 21st now. It is getting colder but we did have a warm up where it got up into the 60s and I was able to get the white on the cabin sides, all gloss white now, and the non-skid on the decks. Look here is all non-skid as is the floor been working in there and the floor up in there is all non-skidded and all the cabin tops and my oar locks are on it's 
stainless steel fold down ore locks through bolted quarter inch bolts. What I'm doing here is mounting some cleats on my mast. I have three cleats mounted here. I made these cleats out of oak. Got a four inch one and a five inch one. The two four inch ones are going on the front. One down low for to tie off uh, the downhaul on the boom. And it'll be a probably five sixteenths line, and then the, the other one will be mounted up higher to tie off the forward lazy jacks or topping lift line. And what I like to do is set these into the mast. I cut out about an eighth of an inch deep here to set these in because it makes them a lot stronger. Most of the pull on a cleat is uh, in shear. And being set in like this, the wood takes the force, not the fastenings. So I don't have to worry about fastening and breaking. Fastening just hold it on, and most of the force is absorbed by the notch in the wood. So what I've done here, this is going to be for the main halyard. Holds up the yard. I set her where I want it, and I had to have 38 inches I measured from the step to here so that I can get the hatch cover on. There's a slot in it, and it has to go into the cleat. So I'm up 38 inches from here, and if I go around it, scribe with my X-Acto knife on the varnish. Now I outline it with the chisel. Peel the little chips up. She's in a pocket about an eighth of an inch deep and uh, when the weather warms up I'll use some tight bond 3 glue and put her in with the stainless fastenings. And this one I've got uh, 2 inch number 10 stainless steel screws. This is a clam cleat as opposed to a cam cleat. <laughs> It, there's the only moving part on this, and of course this one's a breakaway model, but the rope just gets caught in those grooves. And uh, in some applications they're better. But uh, I, I like these spring cams with notches on them. I use these on the junk and they always work really well. I'm getting some more rigging work done. I've got my lines rigged for the rudder. Pull it down and pull it up. I just got knots on the other side. These lines. I got some stainless steel hinges on the back of my hatch. And I have the these loops here. These are bolted through to plywood backing blocks. And I got my traveler run with my double block sheet traveler. And the door frames are in, my door boards are in. And I have uh, some more of those loops with these little hooks. So I got another hold down strap going across here to hold this down. And that's pretty darn secure. And these will come off. And I got some stainless steel latches. I added an extra bushing nylon bushing on there and I got these little stainless steel latches here so that won't be flying off on me got my little hooks the hook there that runs through a pad eye to the other side through another pad eye and to the cam cleat so that works pretty good. It holds that hatch on really secure and it comes off real quick.